Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and I am so excited that you're here to catch the weekly replay of my laid-back yet very inspiring conversations with other full-time professional artists. The purpose of this series is to show aspiring artists that it is completely possible to have a great career in the arts. And if you ever want to tune in and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just check out the schedule over at facebook.com slash groups slash artist academy every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you there. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly (laughs) and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. This week's episode features an up-and-coming photographer from my hometown, Katie Sarnowski. This was kind of an on the whim podcast episode in that I asked Katie the day before she came to visit me if I could record our conversation. The purpose being that I get several messages from artists or just new businesswomen in general wanting to pick my brain. So this would be a chance for anyone to be a sort of fly on the wall during our coaching session. Creating something Out of nothing is hard, right? And there is absolutely no roadmap to success in the arts. But in this conversation, I try to help coach Katie while she's in the very beginning of her business. I think this episode is relatable to anyone who is just starting out in business, specifically in the arts, and when you just don't know what steps to take next. Katie and I have known each other for over 20 years. We also talked for over three hours in this one sitting, but I won't bore you, so I had my editor edit it down into what they think would be the most informative and inspirational talking points for you to listen. I give Katie some ideas for her business towards the end of this episode, and even though most listening are not photographers, I really think that you can use this type of idea and implement it in your own business. But let me know what you think about this week's episode with Katie Sarnowski. Okay, so to get this started, if you just want to kind of describe where you are right now. (laughs) I'm Katie. I'm a photographer, a mom, (laughs) an advocate. I'm also a coach, a lifestyle coach. Yeah. And um, so I feel like I am just doing it all right now. And right now I'm at the point where I'm writing everything down and I have these goals and these big dreams that I'm wanting to fulfill and really go forward in my photography and just kind of figuring out what the next step is. And because that next step is sometimes hard, (laughs) but I dive into my personal development and I dive into my devotions every single day. Mm -hmm. And I, by doing that, I'm just getting all the steps that I need to take and opportunities keep coming up just like this one. Mm -hmm. And I just learned about a photography group on that it goes on every month and I'm going to go to that on the 20th. Is it so, here locally? Mm-hmm. In Springfield yeah. or Bolivar? It's in Springfield. Oh. It'll be at Big Whiskey's. I don't know if that's where they always have it but yeah, it's just a group. Key. Yeah <laughs> it's just a group of photographers and they just get together and talk and have fun and you know and that's Network. the biggest thing yeah. that I've learned is networking and community Yeah have been the biggest things for me and have been the things that have helped me get out of my stuck feeling that I was in for 
my whole life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I think it would be really relatable. if you, like, I, I know that we talked a little bit about this before turning on the mic, but if you want to just talk about a little bit about your like, feeling of being stuck, and just because I think it can be really relatable, and just kind of talk about yeah, just where you are, like what, what you've done so far in your photography career, and like just stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So I think I'm from a small town. Like my, me. my town? Yeah. Same town. We're from the same small town. <laughs> yeah. We went to high school together. Graduated class of 2010. Ten. Ten. You had 10? Oh, oh, no. No, sorry. we had 24. 24 people. Whoever's like. listening to this, I might be wrong on that number. <laughs> yeah. But 27, 24, something like Mine that. Mine was 32, so which was actually a huge class. And so tw- in the <laughs> 20s was. is about it. Like Wheatland's what population? 370? 371. Yeah. Each population sign has something different. (laughs) (laughs) So even the town is stuck. (laughs) I don't know. It's around there. (laughs) But no, like small town living is great. There's a lot of benefits and a lot of great things that I've got from growing up in a small town. But I do feel like it's hard to dream big. It's hard to know how to dream big. You know, because we even meant to talked about this, like even our parents or our moms, you know, they were where they were and they were comfortable where they were. And so <clears throat> your childhood and all your growing up really shapes you into who you are. And, you know, you do have to get to a point where it's time to find your own way. And I think that's where I definitely was stuck. Like I have always been my parents' child that had no problem jumping on a plane going to New York and, you know, spending a summer there, and which I did that, and that was the most amazing time that I have always had, but then, like always, which I just recently found out my fear holding me back, which relates so much to me being stuck, is I had a fear of what was going to happen if I actually succeed, if I actually you know, because I was in New York, I almost didn't get on the plane to come back home. Oh, really? Like, I just, (laughs) I was, I know I'm that person who could do that, but then there, that fear, that fear controlled me, and in my personal development, like, Girl, Wash Your Face, she talks so much about fear in there, and letting go of that fear, and I've only been able to do that by finding out who I am. And I'm only able to do that by personal development. Yeah. I'm like a huge advocate for personal development because it's it's the thing that's got me unstuck. And me too, though. Really. Like I was stuck in the way of, like I was in art school. I changed my major three times, like the cliche. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I wouldn't finish class. Like I wouldn't finish. Like I would stop going to class because I, you know, I've gone through a lot of different things. I always put my love and passion into love for a boyfriend yeah or a fiance and you know I could try to dive in to figure all that out but that doesn't matter anymore you know (laughs) but she she is happily married I am (laughs) I'm happily married we have three kids (laughs) and um but it's still like I always put my love and my passion into the things that were comfortable into the things that I knew I could be good at instead of taking those risks and I think I know a lot of people could definitely relate to that because it's hard to take that next step or to even know like the questions that I have written down in my book that I wanted to ask Andrea was like how do you even find resources to apply to put your stuff in a gallery or to even like you know go and try these things out because they don't just come to you you have to look for them yeah or you have to network which is why networking is so good (laughs) but before a year ago I was just living in the motions like I was just rolling you know just living my life I would wake up I'd take care of my my little guy he's almost four now in August and I mean life was good life was you know happy and but I my heart wasn't fully happy yeah Fulfilled. Maybe. Fulfilled, yeah. It wasn't really a rich and fulfilling life because I was just cleaning, taking care of a baby, going to work on the weekends, and, you know, having fun and living life, but I wasn't taking risks. And risks are, like, one of the biggest things that I could tell anyone. Um, I was before, oh, even, I guess almost a year, about March, is when I started to actually kind of be on social media. And before that, I was kind of against it. Like, I, not necessarily against it, but 
I just didn't really see the benefits. I'm like, I don't want to be that person who's mindlessly on their phone all the time. Like, I want to pay attention to the people around me and actually have face-to-face -face conversations. But we're in a different century. Like, it's totally a different world now. And, uh, you know, I posted my first uh, video on Facebook, and that was scary as hell. <laughs> I know, but I think so many people can relate because I... Um, a couple months ago during our fourth quarter success plan and actually just recently too, I was like, okay, like I'll, I'll challenge people in the artist academy. I'll be like, okay, everybody is going live this week. And a lot mm -hmm. of people, if they're new to the group, they have never gone live and they're like, oh my gosh, sweating bullets. And I just kind of try to reassure them too. Cause the first time I ever went live, I broke out in hives, like, <laughs> it, which is, which is my body's reaction. Whenever I get stressed, yeah. my heart races. And so my skin gets flushed. And so that happened the first, probably three or four or five times I went live on Facebook or Instagram. And then after that, like now it's no big deal, Yeah. but it's just that fear. And it's so crazy how it's just so in your head. Oh yeah. And it's so in my head too, all the time. And I'm just like, but doing it so many times and just doing it over and over again, realizing, Oh, I'm not going to die from this, <laughs> which is really what you have to tell your body. Your yeah. body is like protecting you. Like the, the psychological aspect of it is your body is protecting you from danger yeah and we think there's danger when there's not mm -hmm. it's just fear of judgment and we just as soon as we can like let that go it's just and really I'm still going through it now with like doing um, public speaking stuff yeah I'm not over that yet but I will hopefully it just <laughs> my stomach curls but anyway yeah just just talking about fear in that and you, you started showing up on Facebook and I was I, I noticed you and I was like yeah. oh look at her go <laughs> Yeah, and then when people actually start to notice you, you get this like, oh, like that's it's really exciting and but you still it's you still have that fear a little bit, which that fear of like making stories or doing that, I have no more fear of that anymore. Good. Like I, I don't. <laughs> Learning things is so is so key to progressing. Yeah. Knowledge and knowledge is so powerful. Yeah. You know, but actions are even more powerful. <laughs> you can know so much, but if you don't ever take action, you're never going to get anywhere, yeah. you know? So where are you right now in your photography career? And I'm asking that because I'm not sure exactly either. Like where, what have you tried? Where are you at right now? Where are you wanting to go? Um, where I'm at right now is, I mean, I've grown my photography business a lot in the past year. I've definitely had, like I went back and was looking at my photos and I Your photos actually are beautiful oh, thank you. especially the, the black and white ones every time I'm like that I like it because it's not like the like typical photo it's like yeah. something a little different and like I'm yeah. like oh okay well and that's like the I think the hardest thing too that a lot of people can relate to is there's whether you're a photographer whether you're an artist a painter no matter what there's a million other people out there who do the same thing. Yeah. Or even, like, in a small town like me, there's literally, like, a photographer on every block. <laughs> yeah. Photography is very saturated. But It is. Like, but, and that's, like, I've always wanted to find how am I different. In my head, I'm, like, I could never make anything out of this just creative style, even though that was literally all in my head. I mean... People make you are an amazing artist, and that's how you've made your living is by doing art, yeah. <laughs> by doing what you Coloring. love. Yeah. <laughs> Coloring is totally way more, <laughs> <laughs> way more than that. I <laughs> I want to. Now that I've been doing Andrea's Artist Academy, I like want to like pick up a pin and be as good as this <laughs> one guy. You know, I actually forget his name right now. But Rich, or yeah, I think Rich it, Marks is that. Yes, yeah, so good, it's like so, so good. good. Like I know. people are so talented. Like Justin Cardoza is. Oh, I know. Just, he's just ridiculous. He's a freaking ninja. <laughs> like, and I mean that in the best way. He's oh, so yeah. amazing. But like, he's been so doing amazing. It. He's been doing it for ten years. Like, the, I met him eight years ago, and he was a photographer. That's how, mm -hmm. or a a video guy too. And he, so he's been doing it for ten years. And that's like anybody that I I tell. Anybody, if you look at someone 10 years in their career, like Ryan, my fiance, he's, he's been in insurance 13 years. He's doing extremely well. It's a perfect job yeah. for him. Justin, he's been in it for 10 years. Like, it's if you look at someone 10 years in, they're doing really well. And so it's so hard to compare yourself when you're in, like, the first year of, like, calling yourself an yeah. artist or, or a photographer, and you're like, oh, it's so far away. It's like, just wait 10 years. Like, keep doing yeah. exactly what you're doing, you know, just more and more and more, and it, you'll be there. Like, yeah. and it's such a, an amazing career that 
that doesn't have like a clear drawn out path of get mm-hmm. this degree and you'll get this job and like you yeah. know and so yeah you're doing exactly what you're doing right now just like talking to other people is mm-hmm. perfect not just me but like everybody else yeah but it takes all those little stepping stones mm-hmm. for us to grow it takes you know learning new behaviors and new habits and new ways of doing things and kind of getting out of our own head and just keep trying keep trying over and over again and keep failing failing is like one of the greatest things you can do and I know that sounds silly but you know I've had photo shoots where I'm like okay I literally just took really great photos at my last one and this one what the hell happened like (laughs) what did happen though was it just like lighting was it setting well it it was lighting it was definitely lighting it was in the middle of the day even though Mm -hmm. as a yeah photographer and I highly encouraged to not do it at a specific time. Yeah. You know, sometimes you, I mean, you got to do what your client wants you to do. And I will, even though I'm totally comfortable behind my camera now, I still get so nervous okay. every time I do it. But not, like, and it's only before. As soon as I start, I'm not really nervous anymore. Oh. And I've learned that, you know, like, I still want to do, we all want instant gratification. You know, we all, a lot of people want that instant results and instant things to -hmm. happen for them. And I have learned, and I just tell myself, I'm not a patient person. (laughs) I've always told myself and lied to myself that I'm very patient. I'm a very patient person, but I'm not. (laughs) One of the biggest things, it might have been in my Rachel Hollis book. I mean, I do so much PD. Like, I love podcasts. Yeah. (laughs) And, um, but somewhere they told me, they're like, go talk to the people you want to be. Don't, yeah. like, if you want to be better at your finances, don't go sit there and talk to Joe over here who doesn't have his finances together, you know, <laughs> who has great ideas and thinks he knows what he's talking about, but yeah. go talk to that billionaire, go talk to that person who, you know, is really good with their money and talk yeah. to them about it, you know, if you want to be a great photographer, go talk to the photographers that are really great yeah. and get to know them and learn, learn from them. You know, because I think a lot of people, you know, some people are still, like, I've tried to talk to a few photographers, and they're just competitive. Mm, They're like, oh, you're trying to steal what I do or whatever here. And I'm like, okay, you're not my person. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You know, and, like, you're allowed to not have those people in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's sometimes the hardest thing that people, people feel, like, stuck with the people in their life. Yeah, and, like, competition is so is so crazy, too, because, like, a lot of people have told me when, especially here locally and just, like, training um, artists here, here, here locally, just, like, the business ways and the art ways of it, they're, like, careful, you're training your competition, and I'm, like, yes, I realize that, and I might lose a couple jobs from it, and I think I have, like, in the past from, from just mostly, like, recommending people. Yeah. However, it's also just being really secure with my brand and being yeah. like, I know that I will be just fine. And like a, a lot of the times, like people don't want my art and that's totally okay. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people want a different style of photography. And so I might be training someone who is the perfect fit for someone else and that's yeah. okay. <laughs> well, that's what we're all supposed to be doing. Like. Yeah. Like, just like you said, there's some, you know, everyone wants someone different. Not everyone's yeah. going to like all one thing. A lot of artists, we all enjoy different things. Yeah. We all see things, you know, differently and want different things. I was a little worried about, hey, I, I'm the only photographer on this Artist Academy page. Like, is, <laughs> it, is it still? Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah Justin's in there. <laughs> you know, is it still okay for oh, yeah. me to do, like, you know, be a part of this challenge? And I'm so happy that I am because... Being in this challenge, I'm taking more of my creative side into it. I never associated myself as an artist until really the last couple months. And I'm like, you know, I am an artist. Like, this is what I love to do. Like, I don't want to have a 9-to-5 job. I don't (laughs) want any of that like none of that has ever made me happy and you know and and you know what's crazy like there's so i didn't realize that there are some people who want that there's some people who truly truly want that and that's great yeah but like for the longest time like this was in my head i'm like i never want to do that like that's not my thing i want to build my own dream like blah blah blah. and like talking to some people here recently in the past year i'm like oh you don't want that like (laughs) are you sure you don't want that are you just scared they're like no i don't want that like i want to show up every day be told what to do go home and be with family i'm like 
oh, <laughs> like I didn't know that there were people who wanted that. Yeah. And so it's just like come to my, okay, I respect that, but like I want this. Yeah. You know? And that's great. Like you got it. Like if that's what you want, then be happy and okay with that. Like I think just people as, you know, in general, we all kind of do things for other people. Yeah. And it's really important to, you know, not selfishly do this, but love yourself. Love yourself, love what you're doing, and love the process. I interviewed an artist, Tram Colwyn, on the podcast, and she did um, small butterflies, basically, J- just like I'm doing now, only I'm, I'm doing them in twos. Mm-hmm. She did them on one, like one per one, and I was just like, I love your idea so much. Is it okay if I basically copy you? And she's like, oh, please do. Like, I yeah. love being your inspiration. And I love people who think of it like that. They're yeah. like, I would love to inspire you, not you're copying me. And really, I, I had a hard time with that, too, because whenever I first did Wings here, a lot of other people started doing Wings, and I was like, they're copying me. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just like, and then I was like, well, why didn't they hire me to do that? Like, And then now I'm like, whatever. You know? Yeah. Like, I have enough work to keep me busy that, like, I can't physically paint every single thing that needs painted. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, sure, use my thing. I don't care. But it, it was a, a progression with me even, too, of, like, going from, they're kind of copying me to, whatever, I'm inspiring you, look what I'm doing. <laughs> it's like a legacy living on. <laughs> yeah. And, like, having grace with yourself. And it's, yeah. ha- it's hard to do that. And that took probably time for you, too, to get over that feeling and to get yeah. over, you know, that instant mentality. Because, like, we're human beings. Yeah. And it's it's so quick to go to negative feelings or to thinking that. But... Like, it's okay to feel that way, too. Yeah, like, that's so Like, be okay. True. Be okay with feeling jealous. Yeah. Or be okay with feeling like, okay, that person's copying me or just wanting to be just like me. Be It's okay to be in that for a little while. Yeah. But as so long true. as you can get out of that and have grace and turn it into something positive or turn it into something inspirational. True. You know, or even if you just have to feel like that. But move on from it, you know? Yes, exactly. I, I actually have an Instagram post written out, but I'm like, I don't know if this is too feely or whatever. About <laughs> It's a post about, about jealousy and yeah. how recently, like, I used, to be, I used to be such a jealous person. And, like, I that's just how I grew up. I was, was never taught, like, hey, you know, she's not taking away from me or he's not, like, yeah. I was such a jealous person. And then just recently, especially in the past few years, I've been, been like, oh, it's okay to be jealous because literally everyone is jealous, like uh, in mm-hmm. a, for a certain degree. But it's how you react to jealousy yes. that determines who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to be like, oh, I wish I had that, but like go her, and that gives me something to strive for. Yeah. And I, because I, I read in a book again, a personal development book <laughs> of someone was like, look at the people who you're jealous of really think why like why every time do you see them succeeding or like looking really good or whatever like why and it's because a lot of the times you want to be that way (laughs) and I'm like use it as inspiration and I'm like oh you're so right (laughs) (laughs) and it's so frustrating frustrating too when you have those oh yeah like Rachel I don't like you right now because you're so right (laughs) of artists who are like further along than me and I'm like how are you getting 10 print hours in this week like how does that happen like how is this fair and I'm like okay back up she's been doing print orders for like a year promoting them every day like okay that's why (laughs) like I'm doing murals that's why I'm not getting like this and that yeah and so it's just breaking it down into like okay do I want to do the work that she's done or in some some part of it's luck a little bit of it's luck but a yeah. lot of it is just like showing up and being consistent and doing all of that and making your art good enough and making just like yeah. doing all these things and so just turning jealousy into inspiration yeah recently it's kind of like a transformation in my head because of personal development books it <laughs> is and that's that's what I try to do and like when like Andrea asked me to think about where I am right now and to yeah. think about where I want to go, like then at all of a sudden I was like, I don't know. Oh yeah, well, I and have no idea. Yeah, and it's like you know, it really made me think and it made me sit there and like, oh okay, but I I want to be what I truly want to be because like. <laughs> Even in, like, your own family or the people that you're always with, like, life's a mess. (laughs) Like, life is just a mess. And, but it can be a beautiful mess Mm -hmm. if you, if you let it. And I want to, I want to be an inspiration to others. And I just want to show people and teach people that your dreams can come true and that habits, you know, you can change 
what you do every day and have the life that you want. You really can. Things, I'm such a believer too, and like things, when you're doing truly what you're meant to be doing, like things will start to open up for you. Oh, Not yeah. without effort, but it will. Like, mm-hmm. and so a lot of times too, I pay attention to like, like with ex-boyfriends even I'm like if things just are so hard and are not working out like that's a that's a sign like it's just it shouldn't be so forced and Mm -hmm. I think with relationships with uh a career like that I mean it's gonna be hard yeah but yeah don't let that be your excuse either (laughs) because it's not it's you know what you want to do is going to be hard at times but we're like giving each other a pep talk. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we need it though. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is why you do this, which I just wanted I just messaged Andrea and just asked her I'm like, you know, cuz we've known each other like practically our whole lives yeah. <laughs> and I'm like I just want to get together and talk because that's all I'm wanting to do now is yeah. network with people. Yeah. And talk about business because every time I do you know, like I've already went out on a photo shoot with one photographer. This Oh, yeah. oh wait, maybe that was now I can't remember the date, like, but I, it was like last year, <laughs> not a couple months ago. And I learned, I learned a couple yeah. of things from doing that. So by talking with people and by just, just chit chatting and I just wanted to chit chat about life and kind <laughs> of ask her like, Hey, how do I really create this business? How, okay. where do I start to create a website? Like, okay. how do I do all that? And where, where are you at right now? Do you have a website or not? I don't, I okay. just have yeah. right now I'm just on social media. That's fine. Yeah. So totally you have a Facebook page. You do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. a Facebook page. Okay. And like then Andrea asked me if we could do a podcast, and so I thought that was really funny because I was like, I wonder if Andrea's gonna ask me about doing a podcast. But this is great, yeah. Because talking out like this, yeah. and you it's, know, it's also really fun too. I like to keep these like it's like a capsule, you know. Yeah. And like in a year from now, we can look back on it and be like, oh, I was so confused about this, this, and that, and I don't even remember it. And now look where we are. Yeah, you know, like it's so fun. Yeah, it will be really cool to kind of come back after a year in 2021. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That will be really cool. So, okay, back to where, where you are right now. So, do you, do you say, like, um, with your photography, you do something, like, once a month, twice a month, every week? Like It's been once or twice a month for me lately. Okay. yeah. And I love that. Like, yeah. Which I, is, I kind of forgot to finish that, but I had looked at all my photos, and I had photographed something all 12 months last year. Okay, yeah. And that's something that hasn't, you know, it would either be, like, in September I had three or four big things, but then... August and July or you know there was gaps yeah and that made me like so happy that kind of reassured me like I'm really progressing yeah like I'm really moving towards something and that is my goal is to have like you know like I have of course like a financial goal that I want to fill every month but yeah I'm about one to two shoots a month now okay yeah and that's so, so different from where to like maybe three or four a year but you know you? that was on me because yeah. I wasn't really putting myself out there yeah. I wasn't I wasn't taking those steps to really promote myself yeah or you know it would just be a little bit of word of mouth with word of mouth is great that's yeah. how you really yeah. progress but if you're not putting yourself out there, you won't. Yeah. And really, truly, I, I say this all the time, though. It takes, like, one person for you to really, like, for you to meet one person. Mm-hmm. And then you go from, like, eh, kind of busy there to you're busy. Yeah. And you're, like, you're you're going. And it really takes that one person who has a certain number of connections. And luckily, I know a lot of people. Ryan knows a lot of people. And so with the two of us, we've helped out with a lot. But there's so many people, too, that just they meet one person who owns a gym and you're 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 photographing the whole gym and yeah. like all of their photos and stuff like that or a salon like i um this lady who i go to for my hair she was she was talking about that too because i talk about business all the time with literally every business owner and she's like <laughs> yeah like uh, um she was at at the in this one business i can't remember exactly what it was and she did this one lady's hair there and now she does the whole office building and it just it's That's like awesome. that yeah. and it just takes that one person and the funny thing is you never know where that person is going to come from so you just have to shoot it out into like this group and that group and do this and show yeah. up for that photography club at big whiskeys <laughs> and, like, yeah. and just all these things and okay so yeah so I guess just figuring out what you want to do would help I guess but just to like so right now are you getting are you getting stuff like from word of mouth or are you like uh messaging people and asking 
I like before Beach Body, I would never ask. <laughs> right. Never. Yeah. But now, like when people comment or make certain comments, oh. I will go to them and there you say, go. So hey girl, I would love to photograph like your your little you know, your little one or you yeah. know, and do most of everybody want it for free? Or do you I've put- never had anyone who's wanted it for free. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. But I've had a lot of people turn me down because yeah. They're just like, I can't afford that. Yeah. And, like, I don't even, like, you know, there's some photographers who charge 300 for 30 minutes. Yeah. And I, that's definitely not <laughs> my <laughs> prices. Like, you do have to know your demographic, too, a mm-hmm. little bit. And yeah. that's just not realistic mm-hmm. for where I am at in my life right now. Yeah. And w- whenever I started out, too, like, I my prices were super low because I was like, I want to be busy. Like, yeah. I don't care. Like, I'll, I mean, I'll do stuff for next to free. I want to be busy. Yeah. And what happens with that, there's a magical thing in that where if you do something for one customer, that customer is going to get you another job. Like, not yeah. all the time, but a lot of the time. Yeah. And you don't have to charge, like, that next to nothing for the next customer either just because you charged it for that one just to stay busy. You can be like, hey, no problem. These are my rates. Like, they yeah. don't, you don't even have to, like, don't even sway. And it's just, like... Be busy, and it's so a lot of people are like, well, you know, um, she, she's charging hundred dollars an hour. Maybe I should charge seventy five. Like, mm-hmm. I'm up there, but I don't know. But if people aren't paying seventy five, like, charge thirty. I don't care. Like, yeah. whenever I started out in the in art, like, I was doing like thirty dollars an hour, which was a lot for me. Like, yeah. especially then, like, and I was I was fine with it. I didn't. Well, care. and I do like I'll I'll totally work with people. I'm like, yeah. these are your moments. These are your memories, and I want to give you good ones because. Like, I'm sure most artists or most photographers, <coughs> you you see people in really special days, but they're just, like, horrible photos <laughs> or something. And I know, like, <laughs> it just sounds bad, but, you know, either they, but, and then people, like, I know for me, like, there's been certain moments in my life I'm like, I really wanted captured, but I didn't, I, I just, I didn't do it or just I had an excuse or yeah. whatever. And I know that's happened with so many people because I've had people come back to me and say, I really wish I would have just kind of gone with you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and like I'll work with people. I'm like, hey, if you need to do two payments or if you need to do this, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and you do got to be careful about stuff like that. But I've never had a bad experience with that, you know, with people yeah. who do weddings for me. You know, they do, I've had quite, you know, a couple people do monthly payments. Yeah, me too. And, like, or and I do. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, that's what I do now. Like, I will totally reach out to people now. And probably, I could probably do more of that. Like, I probably should do maybe a little bit more of that, of reaching out to people. But, yeah, now I'm like, oh, there's cute, cute kids or they're getting married. And I get tagged <laughs> in a lot of stuff, too. Okay, yeah. I'll get tagged in a lot of, like, photographer needed. Oh, yeah. And, like, of course, there's 50 million other, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. You never know. But then I will personally message that person uh-huh. and talk to them. And, and you know, it's, I mean, that's how you got to do it. It takes work to get work. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah, I remember for the first, like, year, so when I worked for Bass Pro quite a bit, I was gone. Then I came back, and I had, like, one cl- one customer, and if they didn't need me, like, what was I going to do? And so yeah. I came back, and I was like, okay, I need to get busy. So I started messaging everyone. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, can I paint on your wall? Can I do this? Can I create street art here? <laughs> like, and, I just, and then it took, like, a year, and finally, it started to come back, and people mm-hmm. were like, hey, you did this around town. Can, can you do this for me? And I'm like, finally. <laughs> but like it was like yeah. one of five things that I would pitch I would get and I was just yeah. exhausted and it was just back and forth and so much time and effort but like it takes that in the beginning and I think a it lot does. of people don't talk about that no it's people don't like to, people like I said earlier kind of want that instant gratification on yeah. on things and I mean I do too like I want to look at my phone right now, and there be fifty people who want my photography services. I mean, maybe That's not fifty. So overwhelming. But <laughs> it, I mean, definitely probably not that many. But like, that would be cool just to yeah. open my phone and always have someone okay. need my services. What would you want them requesting you for? I really, really want someone to request me for something that they want, like like art on their wall, like that flower photo. I okay. loved that flower photo that I posted. Or just those unique, fun photos. Um, and I do. I love weddings, too. Like, I love talking to people about weddings. And I love talking to the brides about what they want and mm-hmm. what they... Okay, so if you had a chance to do... If you could, could get a call to say, Hey, can, can you photograph my wedding? Or, hey, can you put 
I, I need prints for my wall. Which one would it be? Prints for the wall. Okay, okay, that, yeah, that's good. So what I would say, and this is something that I have kind of learned here recently, um, interior decorators, go meet mm. them, yeah. all of them. I have my best client from last year. I He was about 30% of my total revenue last year, and it came from a interior decorator recommendation. Okay, I never and, even yeah, I know, right? about that. And, and Ryan was the one who told me about that. He, he just kind of was like, well, they need art, right? They need photography too, prints. Yeah. And I have been wanting to create like abstracts and stuff for hotels and stuff like mm-hmm. that for them because a lot of interior decorators around here, the one that I know specifically, she's designed a couple hotels. And actually the job that I did yesterday and I'm doing tomorrow, which is a law firm, um, I got the job through her and I'm doing uh, specialized art, but she also puts prints yeah. and stuff. So really just showing your stuff to them, she, like pricing it, accordingly to where it's up there where it seems like what it's and price is a whole nother thing it really is like if you lower if you have a low price people think you're cheap and think your stuff isn't but if it's too up there people won't use you and so it has to be in this like weird and so meeting interior decorators is huge and if you have stuff that you think you could put in hotel rooms yeah. Like, I mean, and a lot of people say, oh, that's commercial work or whatever. I don't care. Like, to me, dealing with a business is way easier than dealing with a person. Because with a business, it's the cost of doing business. You know, they just paid $3,000 for a desk and yeah. $2,000 for 10 chairs in their office. Like, me, like, charging them, you know. And they don't like white walls. Exactly. <laughs> and, me, and me charging them $900 to do a logo or whatever. And it's like, okay, yeah. Like, they usually don't argue with me on it. Yeah. Whereas a person, and it depends on the person, you know. Yeah. But the kind of people that I have grown up around, and like, they don't want to spend money on art. They're, and, no. like, if I tell someone it's $100 for a print, they're like, oh, never mind. Like, yeah. And that's just... So I've just thought about that, and I'm like, okay, who do I want to deal with? I want to deal with businesses. That's yeah. my – if someone were to be in my inbox, they, they would be a business who wants a mural. That's what I want. Yeah. And so, That's a really good way to look at it. I've never ventured out to businesses before. Yeah. And like, that's yeah. never even owners. where my, like, thought process has even gone to yet, and that's – I'm excited to yeah. dive into that. Like, so, I'm excited to try that out because that that's true. Like, going to, like – I'll drive around Springfield and I see your art or whatever. And that's, that's so amazing to me. Like it makes me so proud of you. And it's just so cool to, to see art throughout, throughout places, you know, really what I would do if I were you just to get a website and I've heard WordPress is pretty good. If you're tech savvy Mm. at all, um, you can really with WordPress, you can Google anything so if you get yeah. stuck google it someone has made a youtube video how to do exactly what you want to do yeah and that's one thing that i have forgot to mention and even with the price thing google youtube yeah. like trust your instincts too because yeah. you can i can tell usually within like a couple minutes of watching something if this guy's worth finishing you know continuing to watch or yeah. or not you know but use use the things that are literally right here at your hands Right, right now you're, you're uh, writing down like WordPress and so yeah. one day would be or one week would be like set up a website yeah and then the next step would be you know you know make that website a little bit better and then yeah because a lot of the times with websites too I've noticed anytime I, I make a new website or whatever I'll change it later and yeah. so when I like I took a course at the beginning of the year last year with Amy Porterfield and she was just like just put it up Call it good. Doesn't have to be perfect. The colors don't have to be exact. Just put it up. Go on. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's I think part of the reason why I don't have one now because I had um, tr- attempted to do one a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I just yeah. OCD and yeah. like so needed to be perfect that I just gave up on it. <laughs> I would say the more white space, the better, and oh, let your good. art be. Yeah, the, the thing, which is with a lot of like whenever I st- my first website was like black background, red writing, like because I like black and red. Yeah, and no, like on your website, people don't want to see a fancy website. They want to see white walls, which is what usually what art is hanging on, what prints are hanging on. Yeah, white walls and a clean, crisp photo with a clean, crisp description and a price. That's what people want to see, and maybe yeah. a story behind it. You know, a lot, yeah. not a lot of photographers are doing that, and so with you doing that, like I think that would really make it stand out. Like this and is that's the story behind. Kind it. of what I. That's that like I was telling thing. you how I like I've been wondering like how can I create inspiration and hope, and help change people's lives. Yeah. You know by 
by photography and that would be a great way to do that is with the story yeah yeah so that could be your thing so like I would even challenge you to like the next time you put up a, a photo write a paragraph on what yeah. what inspired you and I think a lot of people too even artists like they put up their photo and they'll hide behind like they won't be in it a lot of the times and they'll just put it up and there you go like this is the finished product no tell the viewer why did you paint that how long did it take you you yeah. know these are the things people are wondering like in if you and even with time lapses which you don't really have that or you could put up an editor editing process I love to see other photographers editing processes I'm like oh, yeah. I'm like oh. I actually I need to do that because there's a photographer on my photo mentorship page that I'm on he was like okay how did you do that <laughs> where did you look up like how did you get this idea of your blackout series yeah. and like I was like okay so maybe I need to create like a how I how I did that yeah so yeah, or even just I putting it in the that. caption because a lot of people will ask me, "Hey, how did you take that photo?" Oh, I took it with the tripod. And this is, and then, and then, then they're like, "Where did you get the tripod?" And I send them an Amazon link. Yeah. Like that thing, it's like, oh, well, you already have it. It's like other people want to know. Mm -hmm. And so, but with that, with the teaching thing, you'll attract other photographers. Mm -hmm. So if you're wanting, which is me, which I'm wanting to attract other artists, which is why I'm like teach how to things yeah um, with a lot of people they'll do that because they see me doing that and I'm like no no no. like if you're trying to attract a buyer not all the time do they want to know your like everything you know how yeah. you created that but they do want to know your inspiration behind it how long something took why you did it why you're so happy about it you know like just all the thing like what made you do that yeah. and do that and also just writing down your big goal like you want people to buy your prints for their offices homes um, businesses, whatever. So I would say the first thing to do, get a WordPress, make a web website, get your, um, get like a portfolio up. And that's the yes. same thing with artists too. Yeah. And also organize it as such into different themes and mm -hmm. see what themes are reoccurring. So like if you do like a black and white flower series or something, I mean, just to state the obvious, but like go to flower shops and be like, hey, I've created these. Uh, do you need any kind of photos for your website? Do you need any yeah. kind of photos for this? Because a lot of the times they'll need photos for their branding materials or their promotion on social media. Social media is huge. Yeah. Be like, hey, I can provide you you know, six months worth of photos for your social media for this price. You know, let's work together. Like, and it, even just getting into the whole social media thing and going to businesses like flower shops or things that you want to do, whether it's, I have no idea what it, what it could be, <laughs> but just like, I mean, cause you just recently did flowers. I mean, that's a really good, and just having that portfolio to literally show them right there. Hey, I've done these. Do you want something like this? Yeah. You put yourself out there enough and then people randomly find you. Yeah. That, and ha like actually just recently, I, this craziest thing. And so I'm, I would, okay, listen to, so I'm, I'm not sure if you would be all about like the, so like meditation thing or not. Oh, I love, okay. I love yoga and I love meditation. Yeah. Like, if that was the only way I could work out, I would. Yeah. <laughs> like, There's I love cardio and stuff, but I'd much rather <laughs> stretch. <There's> something <laughs> happened to me recently, and I can I mean, call it, like, foo-foo or whatever, but I'm just so big into, like, okay, when you open up and give yourself time and space and you're really putting out love yeah. and that you were really you are going to get it back. But, like, this past year I was so busy and I just so, like, I felt so weighed down that this past January I was like, okay, I'm just going to give myself space to unstress, de-stress. And see what happens. And I started listening to this meditations book. Um, it's on my r recommended list of books. And it's it's like one of the last ones on there. And it's, it, it's the only one that talks about meditation. And while I was listening to it, it's a bit more spiritual than I like to be. Yeah. However, I was like, okay, like, okay, like, let me just buy into it for a second. And just like, open my mind to it. And I got this message literally while I was listening to this book from this guy who wanted to put my art on cruise ships. And, like, have oh. he, he, like, gave me this big spiel about how he wanted to, like, fly me out to cruise ships and do, like, this big thing and, like, sell my art. And it would be, like, a vacation and a thing. And I'm just, like, this is a little too good to be true. But, like, and he wanted to, like, because I, I just said, I literally just put out into the universe that I want to do more canvas stuff because I have scoliosis. My back does not going to, I can't do murals for very long. Yeah. Especially when I'm older. And so I'm, like, I need to start 
you know, working on canvas stuff that doesn't stress it. So I was like, I'm gonna start doing more canvases. And I just got this call from this guy who wants to order like 20 paintings from me. And I totally believe in all of and that. And it was while I was listening to the book. And like during the book, they were talking about uh, like people who were listening to the book and how things started coming to them once they start opening it up. And I'm like, this is just a little too crazy. Yeah. And so for a while I was like, this is too good to be true. But literally today he booked my flight like and Ryan's flight. We're gonna go down, fly down to Georgia in like a month to go visit him and we're gonna like sign the contracts and stuff That's and I'm amazing. just like, yeah That's and I'm just so like amazing. and like and so but but I also want to say like and not to brag about any of that or anything but it's like he also he found me on Instagram mm-hmm. that's how he found me and he saw a bunch of video that I was doing so he got to know my personality people love which videos. is huge videos yeah. are really big because he but what, he has like a very he has a much older crowd and he likes my art because it was younger just in general and he's like we need to we need to market to younger crowd and he's like I saw you on video and you, the way you presented yourself was somebody who we wanted to represent our company and I'm like if I didn't have that video he might not have called no. and so when people are like hey I'm so, I'm so scared to do lives I'm like yeah. you're putting like you're you're putting yourself out there and you never know what can happen yeah. and like I don't know if this deal is gonna happen or whatever but right. it's, but it's, it's an amazing heavy. Opportunity. Yeah, and that yeah. came be from Instagram, from going to my Instagram, from showing up on video all the yeah. time, and just doing all of that. And so that was like kind of a shot in the dark of like things, amazing things can happen. And like when you like open yourself up to it, and when yeah. you're really doing the thing you love. And a lot of people like they get those. I call them like little strokes of luck. You know, like I call it like a little luck fairy is like following yeah. you around, and if you're working, you're like she'll give you some luck. <laughs> And a lot of it is hard work, and like around here, I you know I've really had to build up my thing from you know shooting out emails and getting yeah. ignored and all that. But then you get these little strokes of luck from little things that you're doing. And so when I tell people to get on video, post every day, like you just never know what can come from. No, it. you you have to take. You yeah. have to take. You have to get out of your comfort zone. I just had this conversation with uh, Rich Marks actually, and because he has a he has great art and he has no mm-hmm. following because he hasn't tried really. Yeah. And so and he'll put stuff on there and he's like, how do I grow my Instagram? I'm like, okay, and there's a number of things. So, hashtags work. Um, just hashtag, 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 uh, every single time. A lot of times I'll put it in like in my notes section on my phone I'll have like 30 hashtags in like different and sections copy and yeah, paste it. Copy yeah. Paste it. Um, other than that one thing that's really helped me grow is there are like art featuring pages on Instagram mm-hmm. so like pages that feature everybody else's art and it's usually some foreign man <laughs> and yes. the back of some guy from India that's like hey you pay for a feature blah 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 like they'll message me sometimes message people but they basically are just art featuring pages and so one's like artwork in studio it's like artwork underscore in underscore studio Mm -hmm. and just ones like that once you find one you'll just go to like the the ones that are you'll click the drop down thing and you'll see other pages that are similar to that page and you'll go and you'll like them so for you I'm sure they have a ton of photography I actually have seen a few of those yeah Yeah. that's huge and so the first thing I'll do so before you pay for a feature on any of that because a lot of people want that yeah. Um, so it starts with creating a really good photo, and which you mm-hmm. have. And so when I tell artists too, like your photos have to be good, and I take mine on my iPhone and I edit them. Uh, every single one of my photos is edited in some way, whether it's just to brighten it up, right. or highlights, or contrast, or something. It's all edited. Make the whites white. I ever tell everybody, make the whites white. I remember something you posted or something you said a while <laughs> make ago. Make the about whites that. white. Do it. I hate seeing off white things. Yes. <laughs> I make the whites white. And so make sure you have a good photo because they will yeah. not share your photo without you having a good photo. Look at other other photos that they have on there. Make sure yours isn't going to be like just completely off the wall does not go with their genre yeah and so I will use their hashtag so I'll, I'll hashtag artwork in studio and I'll tag them in my photo and so that gets their attention yeah and so you can go and you I'm can tag yeah hashtag and tag them mm-hmm. and I know it's a lot of work because every time I go to tag people I'm like oh, I just search tag well, I tag, honestly tag. never realized that that's kind of different like I knew hash, I knew it was different, you know. Oh, like, yeah. but I never thought about like tagging, yeah, specific it, pages that I want my artwork featured on. Because mm-hmm. really, that's how I found Rich Marks. Like, yeah, he uh, he was on the podcast. He was in the Thirty One Day Challenge, and like he started tagging me, and I was like, hey, like, do you want to be on the podcast? Like, it works. If your stuff is good enough, it will work. Yeah. But I get tagged in a lot of stuff that's 
not very good all the time. Yeah. And so as long as your stuff is good, if you tag people and you tag those art featuring pages, they will either share it automatically because you're sharing them or they'll message you and say, hey, um, it'll be this much for this feature and I have paid for them before. Like in Artwork in Studio, I paid so much to where I think it was like $150 or something mm -hmm. for recently. Actually, yeah, it was like 150 because I just messaged this to Emily earlier this morning and I just I sent her a screenshot of my whole conversation with them. I paid them $150 to share my artwork from 50K to 60K. Mm -hmm. And so they've just been sharing it, sharing it. Maybe once a week they'll share something new. It kind of depends on if I post something really good, they'll share it. Yeah. And so that just gets more followers. And it's taken forever for me to grow from 50 to 60K. Yeah. And, but that's, it helps. And to me, it attracts other artists, which is what mm -hmm. I want. It attracts some buyers, I'll say. Yeah. The, the buyers who really love art is mm -hmm. what it'll do. But it'll, for me, it attracts a lot of other artists, which is what I want. Subscription-based model is my new thing. So just like recurring revenue. Um, yeah, I, I do love that with your, your postcards. postcards. I yeah. love that. <laughs> and then also with the Artist Academy, a monthly fee. And it's a small monthly fee. So, not, so what if you offered like a subscription or some kind of thing to where every six months you came in and you gave, or every once a year or something, you gave in, uh, you approached a flower shop, say. And... Um, if they wanted to switch up the photos or whatnot, you know, you just it was a, a thing to where you pay a fee and then it's a smaller fee every year. Mm -hmm. And you came in and you, you know, you talked to them about their brand and like what's new, what are they wanting to promote this year? And if it's like roses are the big thing this year, but then calla lilies are the big thing next year, like you'll put photos up of them or, yeah. you know, like just On like their a, websites. And yeah, and like just that. get a contract or a. Or like a, you know, a floating contract of like, this is, you know, we don't have to sign anything at first. Or you might sign something. Yeah. I don't know. And just to be like, you know, keep getting, because like with people cleaning houses, like they want them every week, you know? Yeah. And they, you want to, so like anything, just like, so I think with you specifically to get quick jobs, social media is a good way of like you providing social media photos for a lot of the businesses around here, because mm -hmm. that's a big thing. And yeah. what I like to do a lot, a lot of times is look at, look at outside of the Midwest and what's working. And there are a lot of social media photographers on the coast, and there's not a lot here. Mm. And so getting into that and saying, hey, I can do photos for your social media. I know what followers, you know, what what will make people hit the like button, and yeah. really just immersing yourself into finding out exactly what that is too, so you become an expert on that. Yeah, and like growing your own Instagram, like and really putting your like putting a lot of effort into your own Instagram to say, you know, I grew mine from 200 to 2000 in two months. Yeah. You know, I can do the same for you. And you're at a point right now where you're starting from where a lot of other people are starting from. Yeah. And you can say, I did this for myself. I'll do it for you. Yeah. And yeah. That's a really, really good. <laughs> it definitely, it like makes me just want to go home and like write down like business plans and like. Yeah. <laughs> or we can do it now. Like, I <laughs> we could time. just do it now. I love it. I love talking about business. <laughs> yeah. And it just helps to have like fresh eyes too, because a lot of the times, like like with me on your business, like with with Ryan, I'm like I'm too I'm too far in it. Like this is what I have. What should I do? And like I'll give him options, and like yeah. he'll help me think of things because it's yeah. we're too far in. Like we can't even see what other people are seeing. Yeah. Like the thing that you see the most on my thing, I don't even know what it is. You know, and like with yours too. And so yeah, I really like this business. If you if you like it. I, like I love this idea. Like, okay, I good. absolutely love this Ooh. idea. And it's something I've never thought of. Yeah. Like, I've never thought of, you know, like, I guess in just this, like, small mind thinking, you know, like, you just photograph weddings, say. you photograph infants, and you photograph seniors and, and people. Like, yeah. that's all you do. Yeah. And with my thing with, with art, like, a lot of the times I won't, I, like, I don't even care about getting into a gallery. I don't care. To me, getting into a gallery is where a bunch of other artists are, and that can work however I want to go where the other artists are not yeah I want to go where artists so like with street art you know I took something that was working on the coast and brought it here and people freaking loved it yeah if, I think I have never heard of a social media content creator photographer in Missouri mm -hmm. yet doesn't mean they're not here <laughs> um but I haven't I haven't seen it advertised I've seen like boudoir you know all these other things but I haven't heard of that yet yeah and so and that's always what I've been like always wanted and strived to do because I 
I don't want to be like everybody yeah. else. And that's know? where the magic is, too. Like, like, I just don't. Like, I love creating beautiful photos, and I love capturing those moments. But, like, that's not all I want to be. Yeah. Like, I want to inspire people, and I want to, like, now I'm loving this idea of creating social media photos for people. And also, like, you're like, telling I love stories. That. And so you can help them with their captions, you yeah. know, of like, hey, I create meaningful photos with meaningful captions. And mm-hmm. that's the thing that I've sells even on found out that I'm really great at, like, writing cards. Perfect. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I'm like, dang, this is such a, this is like a really good card. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, you could make yourself so busy. I know. I never thought of myself as a writer. Like, I hate, like, I didn't hate English, but I wasn't a fan of English in high yeah. school. Loved all my English classes in college. Absolutely loved them all. And and then, like, you know, recently with me doing all of these things over the last year, I'm like, I, you know, like, I, I'm pretty good at, like, putting some words together. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I'm, like, just, you know, really, like, found out that I'm kind of good at. And, like, I enjoy... Yeah. Because I have so much in my head constantly going all the time. But when I write, when I write it out, which is something I've always done, I just have a like a free writing journal that I'll write in just randomly just to get stuff out. Like I don't even really know what I'm writing. And so I've always wrote. Like I've always been a writer. Yeah. And just kind of market it to where like you can focus on the things in your business that, you know, really bring you life. And because that's what I'm doing with artist academy i'm like imagine if you didn't have to worry about the business side of it like here let me show you what to do just do what i say (laughs) (laughs) yeah no and it's a genius and it's like (laughs) such a good thing and it brings people together and it gets people out yeah of that shell that so many artists are in because it is hard to make a living yeah you know if you just don't know what to do like you know for so long i'm like i don't even know where to begin like what do i even put in the search engine you know, yeah. <laughs> do I just put in the search engine? Where do I begin? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I used to put in, I remember I used to do um, artistic styles. <laughs> I was like, I need to find my art style. I don't know. <laughs> my dad was like, you need a specific thing. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, okay, so like, how do I find that? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, well, me either, dad. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's like finding out what to Google and like all that. But yeah, um, so create a website, sign up for Google Analytics too just Ooh, yeah. like just like it's there's also if you just google so google you google how to sign up for google analytics on your website there will be a video it'll be the first one that pops up mm-hmm. and it'll show you exactly how to set it up so so easy and it just it, do it when you first first do it mm-hmm. and then because that just helps you track things and you'll yeah. you'll want that information like a couple years from now and yeah, it just helps just to do, like, where your followers are and where people are coming from. Are they mostly male? Are they mostly female? Mm-hmm. And then that can, like, also help you to track or just to speak to females or males yeah. or whatnot. Thank you so much for having me on this podcast. I really enjoyed it. And yeah. I look forward to growing my business. Thank you. Yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'll talk to you guys next week. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly (laughs) and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more.
If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. If you review our podcast and send a screenshot of that review to me on Instagram, I am at art by Andrea Earhart. I will then promote your art on my story and tag you as a little thank you for helping me grow this podcast and our Artist Academy community. I have a reach of over 50,000 on Instagram. So this is a little help me to help you in Senef. Also, if you ever want your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop on over to facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy to check out the schedule every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you next week.